Okay, uh, tonight I've got an interesting story on buying a used Jet 9x20 lathe. Uh, I think this one's pretty interesting. Um, well, the secret will be out of the bag here in just a minute. Um, but I plan on converting this to a little CNC machine. And, uh, yeah, well, take a look. I've got some, uh, you know, just more perspective on buying and selling used machinery. Well, interesting story tonight. Uh, I saw this lathe last night as I was uh, just searching Craigslist and anytime I see one of these small jet lathes I try to buy them because this is a lathe that anybody can use at their house even if they don't have a garage they could set something like this up in a small room basement or whatever um, and it's light enough to where you know two guys can pick it up and carry it um, and get it set up I was able to take it off the bed of my truck um, today and set it on this rolling stand by myself without a hoist or anything so it's nice and compact it probably only weighs a couple hundred pounds and uh, it's a neat little machine for somebody trying to get into machining or making small bushings and um, you know sleeves or whatever at their house um, here's the crazy thing I bought and sold this machine two years ago and I knew it was the same machine that I had because I noticed that there's a heat signature on here like somebody had placed something hot on it at one point and also had this notch out of the case um, or the little lid here um, so anyway I saw it and I ended up getting it for a good deal originally I bought this for four hundred and fifty dollars then I sold it for eleven $1 hundred dollars and then tonight I bought it back for basically I, I would say a total uh, cost out of my pocket was six hundred bucks so I have bought and sold this machine before and I was able to sell it one time and pay for it um, to buy it twice so right now this machine literally cost me nothing in the grand scheme of things um, it does happen to have a bunch of tooling with it that's inside of here like a uh, two four jaw chucks and a bunch of other stuff um, so good deal nice little lathe um, what I'm gonna do with this I think now, I might put it back on Craigslist right now and sell it, but I also might convert this to a little CNC machine because I've wanted to do a small CNC lathe for a while. Um, I don't think these are a very, um, you know, they're not like an awesome little lathe or anything. They're okay. Um, their, their drive sucks. It's a little belt drive and, you know, they have no hogging capabilities um, by any means, but you can beef all that stuff up. And if you're gonna do CNC, um, you're gonna be replacing a bunch of stuff on here anyway. So you just need some bare bones to work with, which this has. It, it, it's substantially sturdy. And uh, I think will be a decent um, you know, set of bones to do a little CNC lathe off of. Um, because really, when you're doing CNC lathe work, how big is the piece that you're typically working with? This, I would say, is a very common size for most people, unless you work in like some big job shop. I think this one's gonna, you know, do most of your stuff well. So if you were to convert this and upgrade the uh, spindle uh, drive and other things to something of a little more power, I think this thing could treat you all right. So I might give this a shot and uh, build a nice little enclosure and stuff for this. Um, I've obviously got plenty of other projects going on. Um, and I don't have room for another machine, but when you have the opportunity to buy something um, at a price that you know you can p turn a profit on, don't pass it up. If you're trying to do this and, and tool up and buy uh, bigger machines and you wanna earn that money, do not pass up an opportunity to buy something where you can profit on. I mean, this is how money is made. This is what buys the shop. This is how you end up with a big old machine like that in your shop that you don't know how to use but cost a lot of money um, I mean if you want to get to this level and you don't make a lot of money you can buy these things but it's just gonna take a little bit of time a little bit of grind time finding deals and then selling them um, basic rule of thumb is you you can't have anything in your shop that's not for sale everything should be for sale if somebody comes in your shop someday and says hey you want to sell that you just tell them yes it's not to say you want to sell it for um, an inexpensive price. If somebody's wanting it, 
there's uh, supply and demand, you've got a chance to get a premium for whatever it is you have for sale. Oftentimes, uh, what I do to sell something is I mark it up higher than it's even worth. I let them talk me down just a little bit and then sell the item. So I'll put things for sale before I even want to sell them because if somebody's willing to pay that, why wouldn't you sell it? So you've got a chance to um, make a lot more margin on something you don't actually want to sell at the time because if somebody comes and tries to lowball you, it's very easy to tell them no. So uh, these are just you know some thoughts on buying and selling. I've done a significant amount of it, um, and uh, this is you know this is how I, I do business. So if uh, you're posting something on Craigslist and I show up, um, I'm going to buy that item. If I've showed up, I'm already gonna buy it. So don't drop your price because I already went there knowing I'm gonna purchase the item. So I'm not gonna waste my time to show up and try to lowball somebody and then them uh, saying, um, you know, if they were to tell me no, I'm willing to buy it for whatever the pre-negotiated price was before I even showed up because my time's valuable. I don't travel anywhere without already talking them down to uh, some price that I'm willing to pay. And if I show up and it's not as described or something, then I try to talk them down further. But uh, chances are, uh, I've already you know done the research, I know the value of the item, and I'm going to buy it no matter what at that point, unless there was something catastrophically wrong with it. Um, the whole point of buying and selling is you must know the market, so you've gotta constantly be scanning every medium, whether that's eBay, Craigslist, whatever it is, you must always be scanning those markets so you see what things buy and sell at. That way when you show up to some dude's shop and you see something sitting there, you ask him, hey, do you want to sell that? And he, oftentimes people are going to say yes. Like you see a random thing that they've never used in their shop, maybe it's an indexable head that you know you can pull $300 cash out of and the guy's like, give me 50 bucks. You say yes. So I mean, there's just, there's constant opportunity to buy if you know the market value for everything and you know what they sell for you know how they sell on ebay how quickly how many bidders there are in these items so do your research you can make and purchase whatever it is you want if you're willing to put in a little bit of time it's not going to happen overnight but i've been doing this since like 2009 and um i buy everything for cash and it's all generated off of this buying and selling so just uh, do some do some work by by the tools that you want to buy don't uh, don't say you can't afford them um, don't use your credit card to buy them go and start off small you know buy a hammer or a grinder and sell that thing and and turn your money in and keep it moving and and take that and reinvest it into your tooling uh, reinvest it into things you know can bring um, a return rate that's good for your dollar you know don't go and spend your money on you know beer and other things that give you nothing back in return invest your money into what you have a passion for and uh, learn your trade learn the value of the market and uh, I think you could pretty much buy anything I mean I would never have guessed I'd have a, a CNC machine with a 10 tool automatic changer in my garage I mean that thing's ridiculous it's so ridiculous I don't even know how to use it um, but I'm going to learn because I have a passion to figure out how to use that machine. So um, I'm actually doing some bartering to figure out how I'm gonna learn. You know, I'm doing some trade work with a CNC uh, machinist. He's gonna come here and teach me how to use this machine for a trade for some other services that I do. So, I mean, there's a, there's a way um, if you've got the will to do it. So um, I've probably gone on too long about this, but uh, a lot of people, they're, they're constantly telling me, man, why are you always buying and selling? Dude, this is why I enjoy I enjoy buying and selling these things that I know of, uh, I know a bit about. I mean, every time I do a transaction, it's it's awesome. Today, I went and got this lathe after work. I went to the gym, um, and then I went to get this lathe. So I don't change anything in my day uh, to go and do this. I just simply schedule it, handle my business during the day so I can earn my uh, living. I go to the gym because I like to still, you know, train no matter what, and, and I don't put other things in front of the gym. Hustling like this doesn't come in front of it. And then um, I went there, met up with this guy. He was a really cool dude, and uh, you know, we BS'd about his shop a bit, and 
you know, it was a it was a good time. So hopefully you guys can find a way to make all this happen. And uh, if you don't have a lot of money, hopefully you feel um, after watching this video like you can um, get what you want if you're willing to work for it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Well, that's the end of this video. Please subscribe. Uh, stay tuned for some more interesting uh, videos, and I'll probably do a little more talk on buying and selling as I go through. Um, if any any knowledge I can pass on from my experiences, I'd love to give that to other people that are trying to, uh, you know, get more tools and and take this to a different level. Um, this is just the little machine that I bought on Saturday. I've got it set up on a stand now and everything, and uh, I've got it functioning. So, take care and see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.